Dr. Kevin Snyder is the only Toastmaster in the world who earned the accredited speaker designation in 2022 through Toastmasters International. He also recently earned the Certified Speaking Professional Credential, one of the highest honors amongst professional speakers. However, Kevin is not a natural speaker or motivated person. As a teenager, he struggled through depression and even being arrested. Desiring to use his challenges and past experiences for good to help others, he started his career working with students and worked at several colleges and universities. Most recently, he served as the Dean of Students at High Point University. After several years of working on campus and earning a doctorate degree, Kevin knew he needed to share his story beyond just the classroom. This is one reason he knew he needed to pursue his own speaking and book publishing career. And this is when he joined Toastmasters and the National Speakers Association. Since Kevin's first presentation nearly 20 years ago, he now speaks professionally full-time and has presented motivational leadership keynotes and programs for over a million people through over a thousand organizations in all 50 states and several countries. He also coaches aspiring speakers and wrote several best-selling books. One of those, Paid to Speak, outlines his process for how to become a professional speaker. Kevin is a multi-TEDx speaker, scuba diver, skydiver, and sailboat captain. He lives in North Carolina, USA with his amazing family. And fun fact, lived his childhood dream of meeting Bob Barker and winning big on the television game show, The Price is Right. So please give a warm Toastmasters welcome to Dr. Kevin Snyder. Kevin, come on down. Well, hello, District 70. It is such an honor to spend some time with you to help you in professional speaking and TEDx speaking and perhaps even pursuing the accredited speaker designation. My name is Kevin Snyder and I'm coming to you uh, about half a world away. And I know where you all are. I wish I could be with you in person. Uh, maybe in the future, I can be. Would love to be with you in person, but let's kind of show you where I, I believe you are at, right? Well, here is where I'm at in the United States of America, specifically in Raleigh, North Carolina. So although I'm quite far away, you and I, we have a lot in common. Yes, we're Toastmasters. We believe in improving ourselves in speaking and also and in leadership. Yes. But the reason I'm with you today is because last year in 2022, I was honored to earn the accredited speaker designation within Toastmasters. Now, how many of you know about that? Raise your hand. If, if, if you know about the accredited speaker design, designation, raise your hand, please. Okay. Now, <laughs> now, a lot of Toastmasters don't, and by a lot, I mean most. So what's great about this designation is it recognizes professional speakers within Toastmasters. And I don't share this to impress you, but to impress upon you, this is actually my speaking calendar for this month alone because of the accredited speaker designation. Look at all these amazing districts who I'm talking to, and I'm honored to be with you there, District 70. So it's such an honor, and this is something for you to think about if you truly want to speak globally or if you want to get beyond just you know, your club or your division or your district. Well, the accredited speaker is one way to do that. And I wouldn't be with you today if it weren't for the accredited speaker designation. So thank you to the planning team, to Sebastian, to the trio. Uh, they all made this happen. So I would encourage all of you, we'll talk today about the accredited speaker real briefly. We'll talk about professional speaking and TEDx, how to become a TEDx speaker. They're all related. Okay, so we can't talk about one without talking about the other and, and vice versa. But if you go to this QR code, and if you don't know what a QR code is, don't worry about it. I'll give you the website in just a second. But this is very important. Accredited speakers don't become professional speakers. No. Toastmasters who speak professionally are recognized as accredited speakers. And this is straight from the Accredited Speaker Handbook. So I'd encourage you to download this. Go to Toastmasters.org and download the Accredited Speaker Handbook. But this is specifically from it. And it says, the Accredited Speaker Program recognizes speakers who have already reached professional level status in their careers. And the eligibility requirements, my friends, are truly not that much. I mean, they, yes, they are significant. But look, 25 speaking engagements in three years. Payment for 15 of those 25. 
and then one 20 to 60 minute video presentation with a couple recommendations of clients who've paid for you to speak okay and what a professional speaking engagement is is that it's an audience of 20 or more a minimum of 20 minutes in length and it's a live audience so look i believe if you start now you can be applied applying for the accredited speaker designation for next year and i would encourage you to do that you've got resources to help you check out again toastmasters.org you can definitely download the the guy that walks you through step by step by step what is required okay and then i'm also here to help you as well one of the first things i would do if i were you i would recommend that you go to paid to speak biz forward slash accred because this is a special website i put together just for you where it has my international convention keynote that i when i earned the designation it is that also has a interview podcast where i'm talking to international uh, toastmasters international folks an interview with the accredited speaker co-chairs which is golden for you and other accredited speakers and an interview with the international president and more so again if if you want to pursue professional speaking you should also be thinking about the accredited speaker designation does that make sense i want to make sure that we're clear on that so go to pay to speak biz forward slash a cred okay so my friends i'm in my virtual studio in in north carolina and my virtual studio has helped me not only stay busy amidst the pandemic with virtual presentations but now it's actually helped me secure in-person engagements because i have a professional setup and i'm not going to talk too much about virtual delivery or virtual presentations but i would encourage all of you to consider that and i've got some free resources for you with equipment how to get set up and in in know that that can come as well just go to again paid to speak biz a cred you'll get some information there as well okay but my friends what your district asked me to talk a little bit about today was the process of becoming a paid speaker the process of becoming a tedx speaker okay so those are some of the goals that i'm going to share with you in this very short and lightning-ish recorded video about how to become a professional speaker okay tips on how to speak on the TEDx stage and catch this you're welcome this entire slide deck will be sent to you at the end of this presentation I'll share another QR code and a website you input your email address boom this slide deck it's already been created it will automatically be sent to you so yes I'm interested in you taking notes I would encourage it but just know you're going to get the slide deck that way you can be present I'm much more interested in you taking action. Sound good? Sound good? Good, I hope. All right. <laughs> I know some of you are virtual, and then I know some of you, you're, uh, you know, you're there in person. And again, I wish I could be with you. Maybe, maybe 2024. Invite me, okay? But I have the honor of being a multi TEDx speaker. Now, how many of you have heard of TEDx speaking or the TEDx stage? Right? You probably heard of TED or TEDx. I have had the opportunity of presenting on multiple TEDx stages. I've also been a TEDx organizer. So I, I understand what TEDx organizers and teams look for in selecting speakers. But I've also coached dozens of speakers and coached dozens of TEDx events. So I have a unique uh, perception or at least a unique set of experiences when it comes to TEDx. I, for the most part, I, I kind of know what they're looking for. And so that means I can help you get selected and, and prepare. Okay. So this is one of my most recent TEDx events. And this last TEDx event really became a game changer for me, my friends, because, you know, although I've been speaking for 20 years, I never really shared my story. And, and my story is one of having depression as a teenager, having an eating disorder called anorexia, uh, I was arrested when I was 16 and in my first job I was I was sexually assaulted and I kept most of this hidden I didn't talk about it I don't include a lot of that if any of it in most of my leadership presentations I'm a motivational speaker so this was really tough for me to reveal for the very first time and the reason I knew about this event is because I was coaching several of their speakers 
And the event organizer asked me if I would share my story because he had heard of it. And this story, it, it became an honor for me to share my story, to reveal my story on the TEDx platform, truly with the spirit of wanting to help other people, to help other teenagers maybe not feel so alone if they were struggling. And that's one of the beauties about, about your TEDx speech because it's another platform where you can share your story to help others. And in my opinion, yes, it's, it requires a, a little bit of a different outline and a strategy, but it's not much different than a five to seven minute Toastmaster speech. It's not much different than an eight to 10, Toastmaster, eight to 10 minute Toastmaster speech. In fact, I practiced my TEDx talk for my Toastmasters group on multiple occasions to help me practice and get ready. And of course, get feedback. So this was a very sensitive talk for me, very vulnerable, very real. And, and it has also now helped me launch a brand new speaking topic on mental health and wellness. So I don't know, you know where you all are there in Australia as far as how important mental health is, but here in the United States, it's become essential for organizations and schools all of us to talk about mental health because it's a silent epidemic with a significant stigma and there's ways that we all can help by sharing our story. So if you want to watch my, my TEDx talk, I, I, I would be honored if you did. I would encourage you to so you can see how I present on that type of stage because it was raw and it was vulnerable. And if any of you have a, a powerful story that you want to share, I, I'd encourage you to kind of look at how I did it to hopefully inspire you to want to do the same. Because when we can reframe our adversity and our experiences in the past that were maybe negative, when we can reframe those and use it, those experiences to help others, <laughs> we give that experience new meaning and purpose because we know it's going to help other people. Okay, So that's one of the reasons why to think about speaking on the TED or TEDx stage. Okay, I really would encourage you all to do that. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between TED or TEDx. So if you're going to shoot for a TED Talk, well, unless you're already famous, um, <laughs> chances are no. You want to pursue the TEDx event because those are the locally independent events. And you've got several in your area. I've looked them up, and I'll show you how to do that in just one moment. But the focus with TED or TEDx, and if you can, if you can really understand this is, this is a, essential for you, is you really have to have an idea that frankly is is worth worth sharing that's their that's their motto what's your idea and your idea could be something that is already kind of out there but you have a unique spin on it or an angle or it could be something like my talk which was very kind of story driven that led you to a discovery of something new that can help other people so I'd encourage you to, to, to search on the TEDx website or go to YouTube and whatever you think your story might be or how you want to help an audience or your idea, I would encourage you to go see what's already out there. And one of the reasons that I decided to speak about my story last year was because there wasn't another talk out there from a man who survived depression, anorexia, and a sexual assault. Like there was no story like that. And I thought, this is why I need to share mine. So that's why I'd encourage you to, to share yours. So if you go to a, a website that I'll share with you in a moment, you can actually get access to my TEDx training and we have a application for you where it kind of walks you through how, what are some ways you can solidify your idea? How do you know if it's an idea, right? Well, this, this application will actually help you get ready. So I'd encourage you to, to take a look at that. But you can also look at other TEDx events in your area in Australia. You've got several. And again, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But look at, look at their applications as well. And I'm confident this application, because it's the one that we use for my event, is very rigorous. You complete that application, you'll be, you'll be ready. Sound good? Okay. So I don't know if you know about Waldo, right? Where's Waldo? Don't know if you know who Waldo is. It's a very popular children's book. Well, finding Waldo is like finding TEDx. 
<laughs> you know, you can do it, but you got to have some strategy. You got to be specific. So if you want to speak on the TEDx stage, what I'd encourage you to do is go to TEDx.com. Go to TEDx.com. Okay. And then click on this little tab here that says TEDx events. Okay. So type up TEDx.com, go to TEDx events, and then it's going to show you all the TEDx events around the world. And then what you want to do is type up where your location is. So type up Sydney or insert city, or maybe even just look throughout Australia. You can do it that way too. That's what I did earlier today. Get several events. Look at past events and look at future events. Because past events are likely going to be scheduled again in the future. They just haven't been on, on the future tab yet. So you've got multiple events there. So here in North Carolina, let me show you what this looks like. Well, these are all the events that are in my state alone, my, my small state. And it's got 154 past events and 14 upcoming events. And it gives you a list of each one. I mean, check that out. You click on each link. It tells you about when their event is. It might link you to their Facebook page or their website so you can learn more about what their criteria are for how they select speakers. Or you can reach out to them directly. Okay? And that's one thing to be thinking about too is some of these events, they, they because they're all independent, each one is run differently the way that their executive team decides to run them. So some of them, they handpick their speakers, meaning they don't do an application process. Others... They actually only do a application process through a call for speakers. And then some of them also do a hybrid. And that's what we did. We did a hybrid where we hand selected some folks, but we also did a call for speakers. So that's what you want to be looking for. And if you have your application ready, then you submit it. So now you know how to apply, you know where to apply, and hopefully you're already feeling like you want to apply. Are you with me? If you're with me, say yes. Good. All right. <laughs> now, one thing I'd also recommend that you do is go to googlealerts.com. Now, if you're familiar with Google Alerts, if you're not, you should be, because this is a way that you find speaking proposals for professional speak speaking opportunities as well. But go to Google Alerts where you can learn a little bit more about this, where you type up TEDx and call for speakers in Australia. Because that's where you're going to learn about TEDx speaking opportunities. When those become available and posted online, you'll be actually sent those announcements. And this is free. Okay, it's free. So go to googlealerts.com. This is part of the TEDx training too. It kind of walks you through this. So if you want to speak on the TEDx stage, all right, then know, number one, you can do it. And I've equipped you in about 15 minutes already on how to do it. So go to this QR code. It's my TEDx training if you'd like to take advantage of it. Or just type up paytospeak.biz and click on the TEDx training link that pops up. Okay? And today, at the very end, I'm going to show you how to get that for free. Okay? How to get that for free. So keep that in mind as well. And you'll get the slide deck from today. Okay? So now let's talk a little bit about uh, professional speaking because my time is very short and what I want to do is be able to deliver on some professional speaking tips as well because some of these tips also apply to TEDx, okay? So here we go. I've been honored to present for over a million people through over a thousand organizations in all 50 states and several countries. Truly been an honor. Uh, when I first started speaking though, I was not good at it. My boss told me to join Toastmasters to improve. And he was right. I needed to. I didn't like speaking and I was not good at it. Well, once I got better and I improved, I was able to prove him wrong that I actually became a really good speaker to a point where I was getting paid to speak on the side. I developed the one signature keynote, just one, from a Toastmasters talk that when I presented at work conferences for my students, they actually started asking me to come to other campuses and present it. And then my first time I ever got paid to speak was when they asked me my fee. I mean, think about that. I didn't know I got paid for this. <laughs> so imagine somebody coming to you and asking after you deliver a, TED, a, a, a TEDx talk or a Toastmasters talk or talk to students, hey, will you come and deliver this for our, our, our company or our school? Oh, and, and what's your fee? Now you know you're onto something, okay? And for me, that's when it all started. But when it really took a new level is when somebody told me after an event, 
And this is in my TEDx talk. And that's why I want you to watch my TEDx talk because I, I share my journey through my depression and through why speaking became important to me. Because a young lady who heard me speak came up to me and said, you changed my life tonight. Your speech changed my life. I came to this conference because I was going to, I was going to kill myself. But your story made me think differently. I was shocked. And that's when I realized I needed to speak more often. So people don't really know my backstory. And that's why another reason why I wanted to share the TEDx talk. Because I'm not saying I'm a good speaker. Even to this day. I've worked hard on it. <laughs> but a good speaker makes speaking look easy. But most of my journey has been very, very, very difficult. And I've had to battle through those squiggly lines. Because wouldn't you agree that that's a lot of success? Is the squigglies? Yes or yes? I'm sorry, yes or yes? Of course. I mean, we know that our challenges and the adversity that we face in life, I mean, it's testing us. It's also teaching us things. And there's no, there's no presentation without an iceberg. So here you go. Here's your iceberg. But we, but we know this, that what people see is up here. And what they don't see is, is the meat on the bones. You know, this is the, the majority of, of what it takes. And that's, that's what people do not see. So I want that to be a metaphor that reminds you of, of how hard... This might be at times and where you might want to give up. But if your passion and purpose is aligned to want to help people through your story, the power of your voice, I mean, expect some of those trials because then you won't be surprised and then you can, you can push through them. And I'm living proof. And it wasn't easy. But look also where this arrow is pointed. Right? It's pointed upward and forward. So let that be a little motivation for you. And you know, now what I want to do is dive into, I'm going to give you about 10 minutes of paid professional speaking tips. Uh, this is come, comes from my book, Paid to Speak, which is on Amazon. I, I don't know if you get Amazon. I, I think my book is available in your, in your country. But go to Amazon.com, type up Paid to Speak. And if it is, great. I encourage you to get a copy, audio book, print book, ebook as well. Okay, but in case it's not available, uh, I'll still give you another free website where you can get a copy of it. That'll be at the end of today. But pay to speak is my model. And one of the things I want to share with you today are some of those tips on what's embedded in, in paid to speak. So here's the essence of paid to speak. You've got number one, where to start. Module two, how to develop your program. Module three, how to find speaking opportunities with that program. Module four is how do you set speaking fee? Meaning how do you know when and what to charge? And then the last module are all these small little things and systems that help make everything run. Because they don't need a speaker until they need a speaker. So how do you know that you're on top of mind? How, do you, how have you collected lead generation opportunities to speak? Okay, so that's the whole essence of paid to speak in about 30 seconds. Okay. Now, what I want to share with you up front is this. There's multiple ways of getting paid to speak. Would you agree? Is there just one way? No. No, there's multiple ways of getting paid to speak. Let me share with you a few of, of these tips. Number one, I know speakers who don't even charge for speaking, meaning they're looking for exposure. And as long as they have that exposure opportunity, they're on stage and they might have a training program or they might have a, a consulting or a coaching aspect of their business that people can buy into because they see this person on, on stage presenting or in front of a work shop or in a workroom and that's their model. Well, that's not my model. My model is I want to get paid to do that. Right? I don't, besides speaker coaching, I don't have a consulting engine behind me and I don't really do leadership coaching. I only do speaker coaching. So I get paid to speak. I speak at associations. I speak at companies that see me that say, hey, we want you to, we need somebody to come in. We have an internal training we always do for professional development. I started off speaking to college students as well. 
So if you want to speak to college students, then that's something else to be thinking about, especially with youth right now, which is so important. And I also get hired to facilitate workshops, and I get hired to facilitate retreats. And even I, next week, I've got an MC where I'm being hired to actually facilitate a banquet awards dinner. So there's multiple ways of, of getting paid to speak. Okay, but here's here's one of the things in module one I want you to be thinking about. This is really, really important. And this also ties into the TED talk or the TEDx talk is what's your idea? Well, in this case, I want you to be thinking about as far as a professional speech, what problem do you want to help people solve? Now, think of an industry that you want to talk to. Well, what are some of the problems that they experience? I mean, aren't there a lot of problems in the workforce right now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about how your program, how your presentation can help them solve a problem. Because when you are able to articulate that, because you know what that is and you've positioned it that way, then you become the expert. Because that, my friends, is what they are hiring. I've never been asked to come in and just speak, but I've asked to come in and help them solve problems. Also, you have to ask yourself, how are you going to differentiate yourself? Meaning, what's going to make you stand out? in the sea of sameness amongst other speakers that might have a similar type of program. So part of that's in content, but also a lot of that's in delivery. And if you watch my international convention speech, I think you'll see I found a way to differentiate myself in delivery that makes me pretty unique. At least I hope. So that's something else to be thinking about in module one. And then lastly, the call to action. How do you want to inspire people? I'd write that down. How do I want to inspire people through my talk? Meaning, how do, what do I want them to walk away with as a result of this presentation? And that's module one. It's, it's reflective, but it's powerful because everything builds upon module one. Okay? That's the essence of module one in, in paid to speak. And I walk you through that in the book. Now, module two is really all about developing your product. Okay, and in this case, your product, what do you think your product is as a speaker? What do you think it is? Well, if you're thinking it's your speech, you're right. Your speech is your program. Your speech is your presentation, your keynote, your workshop, whatever that might be. That's your product. You are only the messenger. Think about that, right? It makes sense, but I think a lot of us as presenters, we don't understand that. I didn't when I first started. But now I know that, so I always focus on my speech. And here are the elements of a speech. You want a title, a description, outcomes, a bio, and a headshot. It's as simple as that, y'all. You need a speech, a description, outcomes, and a bio, and a headshot. That's 80% of what you would submit for a call for speakers. Okay? You've got the majority of it. Now, once you've got that, now you want to outline that. And I know I'm rushing through this fast, but Module 2 walks you through this. So, you want to have an opening. And I call that a power opening. You want to have a problem statement. You want to have a PSA approach times three, a point story application. So you, in your program, you want to have three points, a story to back each one up, and then an application. Then you want to have a signature story, and then you want to have a power close. Does that make sense? Now, my signature story is that I was on The Price is Right. Now, I don't know if you know about The Price is Right. It's a television game show. Here in the United States, it's the number one game show of all time. And I share, anyway, I'm not going to get into it now. If you watch my convention keynote, you'll see me talking about this. But I talk this, I share this story, I share the video, and then how I got on stage and I met Bob Barker and I lived my dream to be on The Price is Right. Okay? I know, you can see it kind of here. I go crazy, right? <laughs> but the whole point is this, nobody else has this story. And I didn't climb Mount Everest. I didn't sail around the world. I was on a game show. And the whole point with this is that I lived my dream because I had one. And then I asked my audiences, what's your price is right? What's your dream? Living a dream is possible when we have one. Anything is possible when our belief is stronger than the adversity that we face. My friends, that's my program. I mean, think about that. So, that's a power close, and then usually that ends with a standing ovation, if I'm any good. Okay? So, that's module two. Okay? Module two is all about the program. 
Module three is about speaking opportunities. And yes, you are gonna have to be focused on this. Think of it like you're chasing uh, squirrels, okay? Um, if you try to catch all these squirrels at the same time, would you be successful? No or no? Of course not, right? So you're gonna have to focus on one squirrel at a time, okay? I'm a metaphor guy. Focus on one squirrel at a time. So follow one course until squirrel. Okay, <laughs> so let's jump into kind of how you do this. Here's some ways that I verify my, potato, my paid potential. And by the way, could you have multiple groups that you could speak to? Multiple industries? Yeah, of course. But you want to pick a lane. You want to start off with one. And when, they, when I'm looking at a, a certain group that I'm going to be doing outreach to, I want to see if they have a structure. I also want to see if they have events. And if they have a structure, they're likely going to have events. Now, Think of a profession where they need to receive professional development credit to do what they do. Educators, anyone in the financial sector, lawyers, nursing, you know, doctors. Well, to stay current in their profession, they have to get credits to do that. Well, I want to find that association because I want to be the speaker that they're looking for to hire, to come in so that other people will attend that meeting or that virtual webinar to get the credit that they need. And the more regulated it is, I found this out recently too, where if the more regulated an industry is, the more likely they're going to have more speaking opportunities. Woo! Isn't that cool? Now, how many of you would like to get paid? Raise your hand. Yeah, if you're not raising your hand, check your pulse. Okay, <laughs> um, but of course you want to get paid. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because this allows you to do more of it, right? So there's a, three criteria that I look for when I know what to charge. And this is module four. Number one, are they contacting me? Meaning I'm not contacting them. They're contacting me. That gives me leverage. Number two, have they seen me speak? You know, have they been referred by somebody who's seen me speak? And then also, is this a conference or some type of event that has a registration fee? And that's key. Because if I've got the leverage, if, they've, if they're contacting me, they've heard of me or seen me, and this event, by my own research, I can tell they're charging a registration fee of $350 or $850. And I can tell from my research on this event in the past that it looks like they've had a couple hundred people. Does that mean they have budget? Yeah, they do because they're charging registration fee. Now, that's key. That's module four. It walks you through it. And as you are being compared to other speakers, something else you have to think about is you have to offer options to them. Don't be just a one keynote person or a one workshop person. No, think about it. You want to have options, chicken, fish, or steak. You want to offer maybe a little bit more in option two for a higher price. And then option three is, hey, you're going to offer several programs, maybe a welcome video, throw in some books, maybe a follow-up virtual seminar. So as they are comparing person one here that offers all this as compared to another speaker who only offers that, even if they're the same price, who do you think they're going to go with? Yeah, they're likely going to go with me <laughs> or the speaker that offers that. Understand that mindset, but also you want to consider writing a book. Now, at the end of Paid to Speak, you actually have a chance to, it's a bonus module on how to write a book in 90 days. It is possible. It's, it's possible to write a keynote in 90 days. I walk you through how. But having a book is also going to help you become more credible. And that's extremely, extremely important. Plus, it's going to help you on the business side of things as well. Okay? So, module five and the final module we're coming close to the end here, is all about consistency. You know, the systems that you have on the back end about how do you get found months later after a speaking engagement, whether you got paid or not. On my website, kevincsnyder.com, I have an opt-in where people subscribe to get a free copy of my book. And I'd encourage you to model after this because this works very well for me. And if you, whether you have a website or not, I would file this because you can study how I do it so that this is lead generation for you because when I collect their email by giving them a free copy of my book, then I'm connected with them in perpetuity. 
So when I send out a newsletter a couple months later or a couple months after that, I can't tell you how many times they said, hey, I got your newsletter today or we read it yesterday. We have an event coming up. It was a great reminder because we need a speaker. And a lot of speakers, what they don't do is that. They don't stay in touch. They don't have the systems or the mechanisms in place. And then I get an automated email. It's all automated. I get an automated email for every new subscriber. And that's one way that I judge my speeches because I get to see that waterfall of opt-ins. Yes, that's why a website's helpful. And if you don't have a website, you'll need one down the road. It's okay that you don't have one now, but down the road you will, which is why I would download the slide deck, keep all this in mind as you're working on your speaking. Okay. I also have checklists for everything, y'all. Module 5 walks you through several checklists. I'd encourage you to take my speaking business checklist right here. This is extremely important kind of walks you through kind of where you're at. And you want to surround yourself with people who want to pursue professional speaking or that want to pursue TEDx speaking. This is one of the reasons that we started speaking professionally Toastmasters here in, in the United States. We're virtual. We got people all over the world that have joined. Nobody from Australia yet, but we got New Zealand, Mexico, others. But think of a club near you that could be in person that focuses on professional speaking. You know, just because it's an advanced club doesn't mean it's focused on professional speaking. So find it, maybe you can create a, or charter a club on professional speaking or just you know reach out to us at Speaking Professionally. But definitely consider that. Also, is there a professional speakers organization in your area? Here in the United States, we call this the National Speakers Association. I'm on the board. It's a great way to be around others of like mind. And then lastly, Coaching, you are going to have to have some one-on-one -on -one help. You cannot do this alone. You can definitely try, but coaching is going to help you not only avoid pitfalls, but find your blind spots. Okay, so whether that coach is me or somebody else, or find somebody that knows what they're doing that they can help you. Okay? So I hope that that helps, folks. So look, I want to share with you, if you would like to receive a free copy, raise your hand. If you would like to see, receive a copy. Okay. And when you get a copy of Paid to Speak or any of my books, I also provide a complimentary coaching call. And I do that for a reason because I really want to add value. I want to make sure that you have your questions answered. I love what I do. Hopefully it shows. So look, here's a couple things. If you want the TEDx training, normally that is $350. If you want my Paid to Speak online course, normally that's $450. And if you want my upcoming Ask Me Anything webinar where I'm at, answering any questions. I do these a couple times a month. Normally that's $75. For all these, it's complimentary for you all. Okay? It's absolutely complimentary. And here's why. So whether it's these programs here or whether it's it's these books, here's why it's complimentary. Because I am partnering with the Foundation of Hope, which provides research on mental illness. They do the sign. They support seed grants that raise money for mental illness. And if you would be, would be so honoring to support them, well, any kind of donation, whether it's $20 or $50 or more, I mean, you get to see the value on, on these. What I want you to do is go to kevincsnyder.com forward slash hope or just scan the QR code. Once you make a donation of any kind, I'll be notified and somebody from my team will send you whatever it is that you want. We'll follow up with you and say, thank you for your donation. What, which one of these items would you like? Sound good? I hope so. So it's kevincsnyder.com forward slash hope. And then lastly, if any of you would like the slide deck from today, just enter code D70, scan this Q, QR code. Well, I know I'm giving you a couple QR codes, but here's the thing. This slide deck is going to have all the QR codes of everything. So the one thing I'd encourage you to make sure that you do is get this slide deck because that way you get the other resources to take advantage of. So again, scan the QR code or go to talk.ac forward slash Kevin Snyder. Spell my name right, y'all. And then enter the code D70. And I would be honored if you did that. Sebastian, thank you. District D70, thank you. The trio, thank you. I hope to see you in person maybe at a future event. A lot we could talk about. Take care, y'all. Onward, upward, continuing inspiring people. Take care. Thank you. Bye.